everyone, it's Ross. In today's video, I wanted to get this on camera before it was too late. Um, what you see behind me here is my Morris Nigra Mulberry. And there's many different types of mulberries, some of which can be grown here very easily in Philadelphia, in the Philadelphia area in Zone 7. Morris Nigra, however, is really difficult to grow here because one, it's just not hardy to this zone. Um, also, it doesn't do well with disease. And so far, it's doing really well in a container. Um, I think now this is its third or fourth year in this particular 10 gallon size pot. It grows very slowly, but I find that if you can give it the right conditions, keep it away from the cold here, give it the right soil, um, you know, give it some ex extra nutrients, it'll perform a lot better for you. So I've been really pleased so far with it. However, I haven't really gotten that much fruit off of it. And you can see it's got a pretty decent form on it. I pruned it really heavily last year. We took out a lot of branches down low to get the canopy up high going a bit. You can see the leaves are not as large. The node spacing is a lot closer. The nodes also look different. Um, these are definitely characteristics of a Morris Niagara mulberry. Now here's the actual berry itself. I had one that was really close to perfect I want to say about a couple weeks ago, it actually has been quite a lot of time between the first berry and the, the berry you see here. And also they take a lot, a really long time to ripen. So it's now um, mid July here and my mulberries that you would see on like Illinois Everbearing as an example, or Girardi, your typical red mulberry, you know, those have ripened and pretty much have finished for quite some time. Whereas this mulberry is very late. And I find that the fruit is just far superior. It's been said that it's far superior, um, but let's try this one right now. All right, so that one was not very good. In fact, I think there was some fruit fly in it, some of the SWD, so it's a bit of a shame. But essentially what I had tasted prior Oh, that really wasn't that good, guys. Um, really had that like fermentation flavor to it that you kind of get with a fruit fly, the SWD. But uh, what I had tasted prior, and I really, it's a shame I didn't get a chance to really tell you guys what the flavor was like, but take the really nice mulberry flavor that almost is grape-like. I don't exactly know how to describe a mulberry but times that by two and you get the flavor of this. It's a bit more intense, more mulberry flavor in my opinion. Um, not very tart, you know, more on the sweeter side if you pick it and when it's perfect. Um, and for the most part, I was really impressed with it. So right now we're gonna be evaluating next year, once again, what this tree can do. If it puts out a lot of fruit for me, what I'm probably gonna do is take off some cuttings the following year and propagate this myself and make many copies because this could potentially be, if it's worth it, if the fruit quality is worth it, if the amount of fruit is worth it, this could be something that I have here in a container and I treat it like a fig. You know, the figs, they're not cold hardy here. You put them inside, you put them in the greenhouse, you put them in the garage. This would be something I think I'd be willing to put extra effort in. So. For me, I think this is something we should watch out for and look forward to. I've really been excited to see what it was gonna do this year, but again, it didn't really put out that much fruit. And I think a lot of that has to do with just how much pruning I did on this tree. So, um, lesson learned, we got the form right now. It should be off to a really good start. Maybe next year I'll put an air layer on this just to be, just to start that propagation process. And then that way, when it's done fruiting, we've gotten the idea of the fruit, how much it's gonna put out, then we have our whole process of propagation already set, uh, set up and we can make many copies of this. But if you guys want this tree, I actually sold some cuttings last year. I probably won't do that this year, but it's really easy to find at Whitman Farms and it's the Noir of Spain. It's actually really tasty, this berry, even though this, this video did not really prove to be uh, true on that. So. Anyway, guys, I want to thank you all for watching this one. We'll catch you all for tomorrow's video. Grow some mulberries and check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, and share it. If you guys know somebody who's thinking about 
growing more Morris Niger mulberries. Uh, this could be some assistance, <laughs> even though it's really not the greatest. So, all right, guys, take care. See you tomorrow.